Hey guys, Steve here with Revive, and here you're seeing my two rep max week. And here is deadlifts. And deadlifts have been going really well recently, and I'm happy with my formula. But so I really went for a very optimistic 205 for two reps. As you can see, that first rep was pretty slow, and as you can also see, I'm taking my time for the second rep, which kind of put me off quite a lot. Um, you can see I'm really, really trying to prep myself, and I get it slightly off the floor. But yeah, you can see I missed that lift, which is a bit disappointing, but you know, you get peaks and troughs. So here is 190, uh, with being reduced 4 to 7%, which is quite accurate. Um, so I went for 190 because the 205 I didn't actually get to, but that felt a bit easy. And as you can see there, my RP aim is 9.5. So I really want to be pushing it. If you're hitting a 9.5, you're almost failing. So I upped the weight to 195. And as you can see, I'm actually happy with my form here again. I get nice and tight, and my back doesn't really round at all the whole way through the lift. So I'm happy with that. So here... It's my four rep max for a touch and go on bench press. So touch and go just means I'm not pausing at all like you would in a competition. So you see my general setup there, obviously getting that arch, making sure to tense my glutes and putting it on my upper back. So here, touch and go, I thought I'd be good for 100 kilograms because I got 100 kilograms for a pause bench of two reps. But you're seeing I'm struggling again, had held that up for quite a long time. You can see this rep was very slow. So I maxed that out, put it back, and I only got three reps. So again, a missed rep, which is really annoying. Um, so here you're seeing a reduced load, just like on squats, 4 to 7% reduced. And I'm hitting these with quite some ease. So here's my pause bench for bench press, three second pause. And I really enjoy doing pause bench, pause squats finding they're really helping me with my main lifts and stopping me get any kind of uh, stretch reflex and during competition you'd have to pause anyway. So here's my high bar squats. I haven't done high bar for a very long time. I switched to low bar because I was getting pain from high bar squatting. Um, but I really do enjoy high bar squatting. That is because I just think my anatomy is probably made for it slightly better. Um, I get really nice straight up and down bar path. But this is about 20 kilograms lighter than I would have liked for my low bar squats. Um, so I'm definitely weaker, but hopefully it will come up. Something I did notice massively here is the core stability that's required when you get to the top here. Um, I felt quite wobbly, so hopefully I'll get used to it and it will come up strong. Now you're about to see my pause squats. Um, so just like pause bench, this is three seconds, uh, but just two reps again. And so I try and hold just before the stretch reflex. So I don't just sit in the hole and go loose. I make sure to keep nice and tight throughout this, holding my breath, so it's quite difficult, and then powering straight up. All right, so here is me squatting, and this is all about practice and power, effectively. Um, 10 sets at 65% of my one rep max, and uh, doing that with very short rest periods, 10 sets, just two reps. So you're gonna see me do 10 sets of two reps just now. And uh, I've recently switched to high bar, um, which is a bit uncomfortable, but I much prefer this bar path and I think my anatomy is better suited for it. I enjoy it um, and really, really do enjoy it. Uh, so let's talk about power for a bit. So power is basically, it's the product of force and velocity at a particular point in time. Uh, force is kind of the load you're moving at a particular time, so that could be nice and slow, but you're, it's all about that max amount of weight. And velocity is all about speed, so it's about doing it nice and fast. So theoretically, power may be the same for two different loads because movement velocity would be higher for the lighter load, yet lower for the heavier load. So there can't necessarily be an optimal load for creating power. Um, there's been huge amount of research done on this, and there's no known weight which is best, say weight of your percentage of one rep max. Uh, maximum power has been seen from 10% of your one rep max all the way to 70%. Uh, so this is 65% um, that you can see here. So what sort of load should you choose? Um, most powerlifters, um, you'll notice, choose like around 70%. Uh, 
Um, but the load you choose should be appropriate to your sport. So if you've got a sport that requires you to produce a high amount of force, then you want to develop power with using high force. Um, so you might do a bit slower, but you're using a heavier weight. So the, the actual power overall might be the same. Uh, whereas if your sport requires you to be nice and fast and powerful, uh, say something like baseball, um, then you want to create use a lighter load but do it really really fast and then your power might actually be the same overall so you want to select a resistance um, you want to develop power sorry um, using a resistance that's appropriate to your sport so 70% is pretty appropriate right now so that's what I'm using right here Very standard breakfast for me here, guys. This is a spinach and cheese omelette, two eggs, 25 grams of lighter cheese and spinach, and then some fried courgettes and mushrooms, topped with ketchup. And that omelette is cooked in butter. Oh, where am I? Plymouth Ho. Plymouth Ho. Ho. I'm at Plymouth Ho on the weekend. My sister goes to uni at Plymouth University. And um, stayed at a Holiday Inn. I think um, I'll probably get a cup of the breakfast tomorrow, but it's just like a breakfast buffet you get given it. Didn't have anything. Um, just had a Cafe Nero. Skinny cappuccino, but yes. Plymouth Ho, beautiful day. Really, really nice day. Crisp winter morning. This is beautiful. Really, really, really nice. Good win. These ones, they were baked within the last two days. <laughs> what should we get? One of them. It's like we're eating at the Americano coffee house. Looks very, very tasty. Decaf. Americana, Aero, Aero milkshakes that, Aero mint milkshake, it tastes delicious, had a little bit, and I believe that's a mocha, yeah, skinny mocha, mocha. skinny mocha, getting a flatbread, I'll show you that later, and I got the Americano flatbread, basically a pizza with bacon, ham and chicken on, looks good, our pizza was incredibly nice, but I had to do some damage limitation. Removed all of this mozzarella and left the salad because it had dressing on it. There was a ton of mozzarella on there, I still ate loads, so just damage limitation. Currently estimated that meal at 150 carbs, 40 fat and 50 protein. It may change through the day as I feel, but that was just about 1,200 calories. I think the protein might be a bit on the low side, the fat on the high side, carbs roughly right. Um, that's what I'm for. Tell me what you think in the comments below, it be interested to see. Um, it is, kind of, I find it a little bit stressful trying to estimate food to it's that different, I'm not used to it at all, but you just got to do what you uh, got to do. Cheers. Fine grain honey oat with turkey mm. breast honey and oat. ham with cheese double toasted. Finishing off those macros in the hotel. That is two mugs, basically cereal with some nuts on top, and had a protein shake, true routine, with water. Got 
a scale there. Sensual. When you're in a hotel, sensual the scale. So my second favourite place for coffee is Costa. Skinny cappuccino with caramel, sugar-free syrup. And that's what I got. Christmas cup intact. Love these things. Make the coffee experience that much better. Snowman, because he's a medium. Make my way through Costa Christmas cups. So it's a large skinny cappuccino, medium skinny cappuccino, and about to help myself to a Yorkie peanut, limited edition. Pretty high in fat, but I've had a pretty low fat day. First meal of the day is being eaten at this time, so it's about three. Hey guys, so just finished cooking up my meals for the week. Uh, three of them here. These are tuna garlic, basically, with um, garlic, tuna, tomato, I think of a better name, um, loads of veg, and uh, I'll post that on my Facebook group and probably on my blog for a recipe. Um, and I just had breakfast, which was like courgettes and an omelette, spinach and cheese omelette. And I'm now, I start work in about an hour. Well, no, I need to get to the gym in about an hour. Get my workout in, upper body. Um, and then I start work at two. So it gives me two hours to get my workout in and my cardio. 300 calories at least been reduced. Um, and at the moment, I'm just having some Pop-Tarts that are in here. How do you have your Pop-Tarts? Do you toast them? Do you freeze them? Just eat them out of the pack, out of this pack. And I've got uh, cookies and cream Pop-Tarts to have. Um, just fancied having them. Don't often eat Pop-Tarts. And today, I've got an hour to digest this uh, before training. And I'll probably have a Costa Americano as well um, from here in the Tassimo machine. Great, great machine. Um, so that's where I'm at today. Cheers, guys. They smell so good at the toaster. Mmm, mmm, pop tarts. You don't have to eat these to do IF. If it fits your macros, you uh, just can have these if you do, if it fits your macros. Oh, <laughs> oh,